Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about how to make a custom faction. So I'm still going to use the same template that we were working on in the first like seven or eight videos, how many there were. Um, but now we're going to be taking a look like, okay, so what if I don't want it to be like US forces versus Russians? What if I want it to be like a ragtag insurgent group versus, you know, Americans or something like that, you know, whatever. Um, so in this case, what we're going to be taking a look at, we're going to be looking at the faction manager and we're going to be pulling some stuff. So we're going to go down to, uh, let's see, first things first is we're going to start with the players and what the players are going to be. So we're going to go to character. We're going to take down a multi list campaign. And what we're going to do here is we're going to hit the browse. Oops, sorry. Magnifying glass. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this and we're going to prefab this. So we're going to override and again, our project name as such. And of course, if you already know what you're looking for, you can obviously do this in the next screen that we're going to be going into, which makes things a little bit easier. But I like showing this here so you guys know how to find it. So this is for the players. Now, if we were going to, let's say, also our faction itself, like any units that spawn, um, you're going to take all these here, this whole entire list, and you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna prefab all of these. I know it sounds really bad, but don't worry. It's actually really simple. Anyways, so we got our first guy. So we're gonna close this out. We're gonna go down to our prefabs as soon as this gets done loading here. There we go. All right, so we got our boy here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna edit him. So, I know I got a lot of vanilla stuff on, uh, but just for the sake of the lesson, so you guys can kind of understand. So you're gonna be looking at the right here, and there's a lot of stuff going on. You can disregard like the first half of it, but we're gonna start at the very bottom, and what we're looking for is the base loadout manager component and all the weapon slots. So for example, when starting out, uh, let's say we don't want them to have an M16A2. Let's say we want them to have, oh, I don't know, Let's just grab something random here, since I didn't put on any other mods. Uh, let's say, let's have these guys start with, um, what's a VZ-48? Yeah, let's go ahead and start with this. So, we're going to have him start with this. So he's got a nice little fancy AK. And we're going to go down to the base loadout manager. And here we can go ahead and change some things out. So for instance, the helmet. We're going to be changing this bad boy out. So... I'm going to go back up to this left hand side here and I'm actually going to be pulling a lot of information from here to make my life easier. So we're going to go under prefabs. We're going to go under, I believe it's characters. Um, we're going to go under headgear and I'm trying to find something that's very civilian, you know, because we are the insurgents. Let's see here. Ooh, trucker hat. That sounds good. We're going to put that on the helmet slot. So there we go. We got a nice little, uh, I don't know what the hell that is, but who cares? Um, same for the jacket. We're going to go and change up his jacket. We're going to go under uniforms and we're going to give him a, uh, we're going to have a denim shirt. Yeah, that sounds good. Armored vest. Let's see. I don't want them to have an armored vest, but this is how you get rid of it. If you prefab something, you're not able to remove whatever's in the slot. If I do change this, for example, you can see there's arrow and I can hit it and it will actually get rid of it now. That's actually awesome. Thank you so much, Armor Forger. What would happen before is that you would hit that arrow right here and it would go back to what it's originally default, which in this case would be the armored vest. But anyways, if you want to ensure that there's no issues, you can just click this and it will not load whatever's in here. So it'll look like this. So actually, that's a good feature for 1.2. Hell yeah, I'm actually really excited. All right, pants. Let's go and see here. We're going to go back to uniforms again. We're going to look for pants. Uh, we're just going to give them. No, let's suit. Pants fishermen. Here we go. Perfect. We're looking all right uh, right now. We're actually looking pretty spiffy. Boots, we're going to keep the same. It really doesn't matter. We can change the boots. You can give them, you can give them a backpack. Um, in this case, just for this uh, lesson, I'll show you guys the backpack and stuff so you guys can kind of uh, get an idea for the next portion here. Um... Backpack is usually in its own thing, so we need to kind of go down here and try to find it. I don't think it's under characters. Um, hmm. If at worst, you can always just type in backpack and you'll be able to find it here. Again, always look under prefabs. Equipment, that's what it's under. 
Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and give him... I don't know, we'll just give him the satchel, who cares. Uh, vest. We're just gonna kind of keep the vest how it is. Handwear, you can kind of give him some gloves and stuff. But anyways, so, there we go. We changed, uh, what the player starting is. But we need to give him some equipment, because right now they don't have anything. When we go down to the inventory storage management component, we have all this stuff here. All the equipment and whatnot. You want to make sure... <laughs> You actually hit the target source. If you don't hit the target source, it's not going to figure out where to put stuff. I'm, I'm not lying. It's, um, as you can see here, since I didn't change the vest, it's already predetermined where stuff is going to be for the vest. Uh, but since we changed equipment, it's also going to change the target source and it doesn't know what to do. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and just pick things. We're going to say, uh, I want all this stuff to hit the jacket uniform we have. Flashlight, that can go in the vest. Uh, let's see, nothing in there. Uh, okay, so we got these stand egg mags. We don't want those. We don't want those mags. We want AK mags. So we need to go back down. We need to go over to weapons. And we need to find the magazines. So let's see. Uh, if I can find... Where are they? Where are... 762 by 39... Ah, here they are. So you want to make sure you place the magazines support like again appropriate to the weapon that you're giving your faction and stuff we're gonna plop that in there that's going to the pouch and kind of same thing replace them you can also add stuff in too for example let's say i want them to have more grenades or whatnot you can just click this add element button which is the plus sign and you can just plop in as much as you want and stuff however do you keep in mind that there is a limited amount of source you can put into a vest you can't go over capacity if you do go over capacity it's just going to kind of grab um, starting from top to bottom. So if you don't know, like, how much can actually go in a vest or a backpack, for example, uh, in this case, let's say I wanted to go in the back backpack, so where the hell is the backpack? You're gonna be doing this a lot, what I'm doing. You're just gonna open this up so you can kind of see more. Um, backpack medical, there we go. So, I can kind of be like, oh, let's put that in the backpack and give them lots of ammo, hooray. Uh, you can. But that's how you set up a custom person. So, what we're, <laughs> what we're gonna do here... Uh, we're going to save this prefab, and we're going to bring up the world. So we're going to see if this actually works before we continue. Uh, it's always good to do like little tests while you're doing this um, to make sure everything's working appropriately. Uh, now, when we get to like actually making the units themselves, that's going to be really easy. Because really, the main test is testing the spawning unit set. Again, your players are going to spawn as for that faction. And since we duplicated our override, the thing is going to pull the information as needed already. So everything should be A-OK. -okay. We don't need to kind of say, you know, whatever. Someone did bring up uh, in one of my previous videos in the comment section saying, oh, what if you did duplicate? Maybe you can do something like that. I actually didn't think about that. Yes, that is something you can do if you want to have like different elements and stuff like that. For example, like BTRs that I was explaining before. Uh, you can definitely do override and do that. All right, there we go. We got some of the stuff popping in. Uh, now I will warn. Um, actually, no, it all did. You saw in that preview image though that I was wearing more like you know again, um, what is it BDU style? But now we can see we're spotting in just like this. So every single player that is on the U.S. side or Blue Force side, they will spawn in just like this. So hooray, we got an AK. Oh boy. So, with that information too, let's say you were doing something with RHS and you wanted like US Army or you wanted US Marines. Um, I don't recommend using um, the RHS faction manager stuff that they have in the folder because last time I checked, they don't have any composition set up. Um, I just more so like to kind of keep the basic US um, faction manager that the base game has and just apply stuff that I want changed. So for example, for the US forces, I would either A, plop in, uh, <laughs> plop in the guys, or I'll change it myself. Now there is a problem because unfortunately, if we're looking at character US randomized, whatever, we don't really need to care about that. But if we are looking at something like this and I was on RHS and plugged it in there, there is a high chance it's not gonna work because the unit itself has its own faction tied to it. So, we're going to go ahead and just take a look at the U.S. Rifleman, and then from this uh, information here, you can kind of get the general idea. For instance, if we go and look in here, we got a lot of guys to work with, but 
We're just going to override just this rifleman, and I'm going to be kind of showing you guys some of the other things that we have going on here. So there we go. Uh, rifleman has been taken over. Sometimes when you do that from here, it will pop up and go up to USSR. I don't know why it does that. All right. We're going to take a look at this guy. Now, if we go back up to the prefabs, if we now we have a new folder called Factions, Blue Fort US Army. Uh, we're going to pull this guy up here. So now we can kind of change this guy. If I go to the filter components, as we can see, I have the faction right here. So let's say you were, you were working with RHS, uh, for example. If I pulled one of the RHS units, um, it will have a totally different faction affiliation and stuff. But you can use that. All you need to do is just when you override it, go over to faction affiliation and change this to whatever the faction key is for your faction manager. If you really want to make things really easy for yourself. Um, I know people that do that and it's really simple and really easy, but kind of what we did for the For our starting guy you want to do the exact same thing So if you want to make a completely custom faction that no one has made before this is exactly how you do it uh, Kind of go through change them up and stuff do whatever you need to do and then what's gonna happen uh, I'm just gonna exit out this to kind of show you so what's gonna happen here is that When you go into that manager and that faction manager, it's gonna change the individual unit it will also change that units that's plopped into the groups as well. So for instance, I go over to groups here and I go to blue fort and I go to, ooh, green berets. Uh, if I go over to, let's see, where the hell is it? Where, I, I always forget where the uh, the huge groups and stuff are. It's not under that, because you got ambient patrols in green. You know, I'll just make this uh, real easy for myself. I, We'll go back into the world. I'll take a look at these groups here. But basically, in short, wherever you change in the individual units will also change for that individual unit that's applied to the group that you can put down or spawn through the barracks and stuff like that. So you don't need to do anything else. You don't need to change uh, the group layout and stuff like that. You don't need to. Um, however, comma, the ambient patrols that you put down, like let's say we were doing all the ambient patrols like we did for the PVE, you are going to want to ensure that it's pulling the correct information. I had to do this for my Kunar province, like Taliban stuff, because for whatever reason, I had all the units set up. The groups were spawning. I put down in Zeus, but the ambient patrols were just doing USSR. So I had to go through and change all that. So make sure that is something you do. But kind of the same way, if you are going to edit anything else going forward, it's very simple. Uh, again, we're not looking at characters. If we go down to groups, you have all this stuff here. We got a fire team. And then you, if you do want to change them for whatever reason, you can override it. But don't worry. It's just going to grab the information that's up in the character section as well. Um, if we go over to multi-list, you see we have the not spawn. This is the stuff that you play down, like the ambient patrols and stuff like that. This is what you're going to want to change. This is actually not going to grab from your character section. So, for example, let's say I want my ambient patrols that I place down through editor. I want to ensure that... These are not USSR guys, but these are actually, let's say, Taliban, for example. You'd want to go through, again, we're going to want to override, prefab that, you know, all that kind of stuff, and then move the units over in the right-hand side in the thing. So, for example, I'm just going to go and do this. I know it's a little time-consuming, but welcome to making custom factions. We're going to go back over here. We're going to go back down to prefabs. We're going to go over to groups. Let me try to find them here. They can always be a lot of fun. Here we go. Groups, Blue Fort, Ambient Patrols, this. If we go over here and go to our section, where are we? Here we go. So we see we have the characters, USGL, and all this other stuff. It's always very, very, very good to ensure that it is actually grabbing the stuff. So let's say we want a US soldier here. We're going to grab it from our section and plop it in right there. Again, this is just something I've noticed while working on my Taliban stuff on Kunar Province and Mogadishu that the ambient patrols sometimes, and again, parentheses sometimes, will not actually pull correctly. So if for whatever reason you set up your units correctly, you look on the map and all the ambient patrols are not set correctly, go in over here and then check all this and make sure these are properly set for what you custom made. Just something that happens is what it is. But anyways, that's how you create your custom factions. There's a lot more in here that you can take a look at. For instance, um, just kind of give you guys to let those uh, wheels turn. If I go back over to characters and I go back over to my campaign final, this here. Again, it doesn't matter. I'm just kind of pulling this up. 
if I go over to character sound component, and let's say I was working with the mod Taliban voices, if I wanted to change this so they didn't sound Russian, I would go to that folder with that mod and I would remove all of these and I would just apply that Taliban sound mod right here. And now you got Taliban guys that are actually speaking Afghani or Arabic. Wow, my American is really showing. Anyways, so take that as you would if you're going to put any like voice sound mods and stuff, that's how you would do it. Uh, yeah, just hoping that someone makes a German one for the World War II stuff. I'm really looking forward to that. But anyways, that's how you make a custom faction. Yes, it is a lot of work. However, you can customize stuff to how you see fit, which is awesome. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Uh, there's going to be another video. Do I know what it is? No, but we'll see. Anyways, take it easy. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. If you learned something today, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and if there's something that you'd like to see as a tutorial, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out my Twitch. I sometimes do dev streams from time to time, so you might be able to learn something from there. Anyways, take it easy. Bye-bye.